Your first reaction when you, when you heard it all went down yesterday? Well, a couple of reactions. I was very disappointed and, uh, and then saddened. You know, disappointed for AJ. AJ's a friend. Uh, I don't know Jeff Lunau very much, uh, but, but AJ I know pretty well. And so I was very disappointed for that. And then I'm, I'm saddened because I do believe this is going to be a, a, hard, a hard knock for the Astros. It's going to be tough to come back from this. Why do you, why do you say that? Well, I think that, you know, you're, you're cruising around. From what I've seen, teams have a uh, momentum. They, yeah. They're doing pretty good. They're moving along just fine. And uh, then all of a sudden things happen, and it, teams just don't gel as much anymore. No matter how much you, you try to put them together, no matter how much you, you, you set uh, uh, goals and say, let's put this behind us, that it, 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 it causes uh, disruption. And uh, a lot of times it just doesn't work like you want to. And plus, I think the Astros needed to make a couple of moves. I love our, our, our team, basically, yeah. but I still think we need pitching. You know, you've always yeah. heard me say you need more and more pitching. I, I don't like our pitching going forward, and I think that'll, that'll end up showing off. And we're going to have trouble trading for pitching now, in my opinion, because the draft choices, not having draft choices yeah. this year, one and two, not having draft choices one and two next year, that's going to have a major impact. We spend a lot of our good young talent. Uh, for Grinky and for Verlander, and, and yep. which were, were good moves, in, in, in my opinion, and in, in just about any baseball man's opinion, those were good moves. But you need to replenish, and now it's going to be harder to replenish your minor league system. Uh, did the punishment fit the crime? You think in this case? Well, from what I read, uh, and I've not read the entire report, uh, Manfred's report. I've read a lot of it. Um, probably, probably so. You know, it probably need to be suspended. I felt, uh, I read AJ's comments yesterday, and that was pretty uh, heartfelt from, from what I can tell. And I, AJ had told me at one point, he said, you know, I kind of had an idea what was going on, and he took a bat to the monitors and broke it a couple of times. You would have hoped that would have sent a message to the players. And in many cases, and I'd be, I'd be inclined to agree with him on this as a former manager, that's a pretty dramatic message to send players. It's not like you have to get up and point your finger and say, you, 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 don't do this anymore. When you, you blow up a TV, yeah. that's a pretty good message to say, I don't like what you're doing here and you need to stop. That's a pretty good message. And they didn't stop. Now, AJ says, look, maybe I didn't do enough to stop it. And um, so I'll tip my hat to him for, for uh, taking that on him. But at what point? I mean, if this is going on one day and he put a stop to it, went on more than that. So, I mean, where, where are you going to stop the line where there's too much and not enough? From a man, manager's perspective, um, why didn't he just get up in front of the players and say, cut it out? Well, I think there's a lot of, there's a, and from my opinion is, there's a lot of dynamics in the clubhouse. Now, at this point on this question, I don't know any more than you do on yeah. why he didn't do that. I mean, we've never discussed that with him or not. I can only surmise from my own uh, mind why I might not have done it a different way. It's you feel like, number one, that what you did was sufficient enough that you displayed anger and you took it out on, on a monitor. You shouldn't have to tell players, you know, probably any, any more beyond that. You sh shouldn't have to. There's also dynamics in the clubhouse. You get certain people that are, um, you, you've got to be careful with how you handle them. It's not like it was in the old days where you say, drop down and give me 50 push-ups, or if, I don't, if you step out of line, you're gone. That's not the way it works anymore. The player steps out of line, the manager's gone. We just saw this. The players are out of line in this particular case, and the manager's gone, and the GM's gone. So I, I think the guy that's getting a free card here is Carlos Beltran. I mean, but from everything I can read and from the report, that a lot of this instigated between uh, but him and Corey, and yet Beltron gets a free ride, and he probably ben benefited from this. Let's face it, players benefit if the cheating was working. And I find it hard to believe, to be honest with you, if we want to get into the details yeah. on that, I find it real hard to believe that the cheating was really working. And I've been down this road before <laughs> as a player and as a manager, and uh, it, it, it's just too hard to fathom. But if it did work, then the players benefit. They get better contracts. They get more money. So, for them to have uh, the one thing that I took exception to the to the Rob Manfred's uh, deal was that there were so many players in there on different teams that he felt like he couldn't do anything to players. It was impractical. Baloney. If the players are breaking the rules, you got to bring the the players uh, to task on that. That was going to be my next question because everybody's asking, why did the players get punished? Yeah. Well, the players were granted immunity to yeah. to, to get 
to community. get to the bottom of this. Yeah. So once that rule is established, okay, I live with that. Players, players get immunity. However, the point that he made in there, there were so many players, uh, the quote, this is not an exact quote, yeah. there were so many players and they're on so many different teams now that it was impractical to, to bring the players to task on this. Because it would hurt the I, game, you know, the fans. Well, <laughs> if you got to, you know, so, so does this, I mean, if I'm going to follow that line of logic, if there were seven or eight GMs or, or managers that knew that their teams were cheating, oh, there's too many managers so we can't we can't bring anybody up to on task on this because there's too many of them that have been doing it if i'm going to follow that line of logic but so i think the players got got a little uh, free task on here but going back to your main point there's dynamics in the clubhouse and you have to be real careful when you've got something going good on how you handle that because you can kill that dynamic and lose your momentum and so i think perhaps some of that might have gone on I know in my mind when I've made what you would consider disciplinary decisions, you boy, you weigh real quickly. How, how are the players going to view this? How is it going to affect our, our momentum? Our, if, if you have any with the club, and certainly in 2017, we had great momentum. We had great players. We were the best team yeah. in baseball. There's no question. I, I believe that's why they didn't take away the trophy. Clearly, we were the best team in baseball, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. going back to what you said earlier, it was like, Hinch broke the monitor twice. You, that should tell you, okay, let's not yeah, do this. Yeah. He just kept going back to it. Well, and, but, you, and you can always say, well, why do you do it a different way? Well, even if he'd had a meeting and uh, said, players, I, I, I hear that uh, somebody's looking at this monitor and doing all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to leave this monitor over here, but I don't want anybody doing this anymore. And, and yeah. if he'd have done that, he'd had the meeting. And now this has all happened. Somebody comes in and says, well, why didn't you get rid of the monitor? Well, he got rid of the monitor. <laughs> so, so he, you know, that's a catch-22. I don't think there's a, 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 a fair answer that he could give to that question on why didn't you do it a different way. So he did send the message, and the players should have responded. They should have. They, they say it every time this story comes up. Sign ceiling's been happening for 100 years. It happened in your day. Of course, it was different. It didn't have the electronics and everything. But there was an art to it. Right? There, there, there is an art and, and part, part science, too. I mean, you have to. I actually had a, a friend of mine, and in, in, uh, we're at Carthen Woods Country Club now, and yeah. I had a friend of mine named, named John Wing. And uh, unfortunately, John has since passed away, but he's a big baseball fan, and he was a big military. He's a West Point guy. And so I actually, at one time, had employed John Wing to put me in touch with a code, code guy from West Point and say, how would I build a matrix to, to break the signs of the coaches? So how, how do you, you military guys go about breaking the codes? And we had, it got so confusing that I, I would have never been able to figure it out, so it didn't work. So the short answer is yes, but that was in the uh, spirit of what was inside the lines. So okay. the, the, you weren't breaking a written rule by by stealing a sign or if the guy couldn't disguise his signs so that I couldn't pick them up, then that was on him, not on me. That so baseball. that's been considered the way baseball was. However, in this rule, and I don't, uh, and, and the Astros are complicit in this, this, it is written, do not use electronic yeah, surveillance. Yeah. And I also think that one reason the, the, uh, the takedown was so severe is because Matt, Rob Manfred, in his capacity as commissioner, had written a letter back in seven, September 17 and said, hey, we're here, this is going on, don't do it. And it's against the rules. Yeah. And so electronic surveillance, and I get it, the integrity of the game is really, really important. It's important to us, it's important to fans, it's important to a lot of people who bet on it. And, um, yeah. it, it, you know, if that's the rule, then you need to, you need to follow the rule. And, and they didn't follow the rule in that regard. Tell me, tell me the story of Ray Knight. I heard you this morning. Well, um, yeah, this, it's a good story because, you know, you talked about uh, stealing signs. We've all been about trying to steal the signs. Every team that does it, there was an old adage that if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah. And there's, there's some truth to that, you know, you, which means be aware of what's going around. If, if you see your short, when I came up with the, with the um, uh, Oakland A's and we played in Kansas City, Burt Campaneris came to me. I was a rookie and we're playing in Kansas City. And he said, watch Freddie Patek. If it's a breaking ball, he'll be on the left side of that seam when you have a right-handed pitcher. If it's a fastball, he'll be on just on the right side of that seam. And he was dead right on, and it was that way for two That's years. Just, just watching. And he was just waiting. Now, is he stealing something on that? That's an observation. So, 
Yeah, that gave us an edge. And so are you are you supposed to not see that? <laughs> so if I'm at second base and the catcher puts down one and it's a fastball and he puts down a two and it's a curveball, am I not supposed to see that? Well, Ray Knight that I played with, with, with the Astros was the best I'd ever seen at Steel and Science. Now, I'd been with a bunch of older players and all that, but Ray was the best. If he was at second base by the third sign, he had the, the communication between pitcher and catcher. He just, he just had a knack for it. So he was a code breaker back before they were code, you know, really, really in a true sense. But none of the Astros at the time wanted the sign. Didn't, didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't pick them up. Why? Because they didn't, it, it messes with their concentration. And in my case, the reason I didn't want it, I tried it. I'm going to tell you, I'm standing on a moral high ground any more than anybody else. Sure, if Ray had them, I tried it. But if I knew a fastball was coming, it could have been four feet outside. I was swinging because I knew it was coming. I was geared up. So I learned very quickly, this just didn't do me any good. That's the only reason I didn't do it. But mo none of our players wanted, wanted the signs. Now, yeah. veteran players tend to like to have the edge over yeah. that more than younger players some. But if you go to the, the mechanism of what perhaps the Astros are doing, mm -hmm. it, I, I can't fathom that it would have that it would have really, really helped. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't, and I'm not saying it wasn't against the rules. I'm just saying that I, I find it hard to believe that it really was helping. And because, because when you're at the plate, you're, you're in concentration mode, right? It, the definition of concentration for, for me is the ability to blank. That, that, so in baseball, when you're concentrating, you don't sit there and say, okay, he's going to throw me a fastball. No, he's going to throw me a slider. Or he's going to pitch me away. He's gonna pitch. And that's not the way you do when you go to the plate. When you go to the plate, the, which, the way you learn to do it is you go blank. You do all your work before you get to the plate. And when you get up there, you go blank, which means you don't hear the crowd. Now, you know when you watch the movies and, and uh, it's all of a sudden, you know, in, in, in the sports movies, they'll have the crowd noise is going great. And then all of a sudden, here comes a pitch or the guy throws yeah. the football and, and it goes silent. And it's the player focuses and he catches it and he scores a touchdown or he hits a home run. And then all of a sudden the noise comes back. Well, that's whoever came up with that idea is exactly that's spot that's on. When Michael Jordan is going for the final shot of the game, I guarantee he doesn't hear one peep of the crowd. He makes the shot and then all of a sudden, you know, the uproar comes in and he's aware of everything around him at that moment. But boy, when he's in that zone, he doesn't hear anything. So most players, I think, if you're banging on a trash drum, that, that, that's tuned out. They, they don't want to hear that. And there's not enough time, even though, you know, if, even if you have real time, which is what they had on that, in, in yeah. the camera, into the, into the TV monitor, there's pretty much real time. Even at that, by the time the pitcher takes that sign, he's gotten from the catcher, unless he's looking at somebody on base, yeah. you know, then there's a fraction of a second yeah. that you have there. And most players won't, that, that distracts them more than helps them. So, I find that in many of these cases, uh, I, I think probably it was going on less than this yeah. would have you believe. I think probably fewer players were using this, maybe only one or two perhaps. The other players might have just, they might have been going on, but they weren't really using it. Yeah, I, when, I saw, when I saw the report that all the players were involved, I'm like, you're going to sit here and tell me Altuve and Springer and those guys. I go, I don't see that. I can see the lesser players that are trying to keep their job on the roster, getting whatever help they can. but. I, I found that. So, so that brings up a point now. Like, so everything's tainted now, but what about these guys' careers? Because I heard, heard another interview that said, well, what about when Altuve's up for the Hall of Fame? Is this going to come into play? And they said, and let's see what he does now, I guess. Or Yeah, what, what happens before, uh, you know, after all this? There'll probably be something about it, but Hall, uh, uh, Altuve's a Hall of Famer for me. Yeah. <laughs> if he keep, keeps up what he's been doing, he's a Hall of Famer. If they ever ask me for a vote, I'm checking that box, baby. He's a Hall of Famer. So I don't think this should, should uh, so, I, I guarantee you, there's a few more rotten characters in the Hall of Fame than Altuve's ever going to be. So, so I'm voting Al, Altuve in. This is not a, a mark on his career as far as so I'm concerned. So I guess the question now is, and from, from you, your former baseball player, how do the Astros get past this? I mean, they fired the manager of GM, but what about the players? How do they get past that? Well, I, I was actually talking to a, a former player this morning, and, you know, players, you can't give them an excuse. Don't, don't give a player a, a reason to fail. And in this case, I, the one thing you don't want to give a player a reason to fail and say, 
okay, guys, uh, we got to deal with this. Yeah, you have to deal with it. You have to get to put this behind you. But the beautiful thing about the sport of baseball, it's a getaway. It is therapeutic. When you, when you start the game, you're not thinking about your problems at home. You're not thinking about, did somebody cheat last year? That doesn't come to your mind. When that pitcher's on the mound, you're ready to make it. That stuff is not on your mind. You are so focused on what you're doing. None of that stuff matters. The world's at war. It doesn't matter. Your wife has just beat you up. It doesn't matter. You, you are so focused that, that doesn't, that's the beauty of the game. I, and I am fond of saying that for three hours a day, you get to forget about everything else in the world and you get to play baseball. So, so for me, the question on how do you focus, that's the easy part. The tough part is, is that in the, the first tour around the league, you're going to have to answer the same questions over and over and over again. You just, that's what you're going to have to do. And you're going to have to be gracious about it. And you're going to have to be honest about it. Everybody sees through these things these days. And there's so much media and social media, you can't get, you, you know, lying's not going to do you any good. So be honest about it. Okay, we cheated. We're paying the price, uh, you know, and now this is behind us, and so we're going to focus on baseball. But I think the, the going to play baseball is the easy part for a manager to do. The tough part's answering all the questions over and over again. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned they, they do need some pitching, so we'll, we'll see how that hashes out. But I'm, I'm thinking this is going to put a big chip on their shoulder. I mean, is this motivation, you think? Let's go out and show them? Could be. Yeah, if, if, if players react that way, that's a great way to, to be motivated. I've all, often felt that when somehow your team or your players have been slighted in some way or, or, or somebody's said something not very pleasant about you, that's a great motivating tool. It shouldn't be that you cower and go into some corner and give up. So, yes, it could, that could be a powerful motivating tool. So uh, I guess uh, the Cordova, the, the bench coach, I don't know. The, so they, they got to name somebody manager. I think he's, he's the bench coach. Espada. What is his name? Espada. Espada, yes, yeah. Espada. Uh, he says he's a good baseball guy. I don't, I don't know him, but he knows the team, they say. So. Well, he was a bench coach last year, and I think he's probably comfortable with the team. And, and that's one of those decisions that um, you know, Crane's going to have to make. But Crane's in transition right now with the Astros. Uh, you know, basically, you've you've removed uh, Reed Ryan and your business operations, yeah. and now you've had to remove your general manager. And now we got spring training coming up in a, in a month, yeah. and so you really need to get going here because you got to get some stuff. Um, and I would imagine that over the last several months, they suspected the last two months. Crane, they probably suspected something was coming down. To what degree, they didn't yeah. know, but they suspected something. So they might have held back a little bit on, on moves that they were thinking about making to see a severe, how severe this was going to be. So you really need to get going now. Crane knows that. Uh, he's a good baseball guy, actually. And yeah. most, owners, most owners aren't as savvy as he is on the game and, and the player themselves. Ha him having played gives him an advantage, I think. So. Uh, uh, Luno built a pretty doggone good organization, and uh, Crane hired Luno, so maybe he'll hire another one that'll do the same thing. So uh, we'll see what happens. But but just remember, if this goes downhill a little bit, it just doesn't come back quickly. It takes it a while. You just don't get a Correa, Altuve, Springer to pop up in, in consecutive drafts. That just rarely ever happens. I mean, when you get those type players, you know that that come along, you know, Springer's the number one pick, Altuve, yeah. nobody wanted to sign him, you know, he's too little, but, but those are the rare things that, that come together that, that are really yeah. exciting. It's going to be hard to duplicate that. Kind of Not that it can't happen, and, and I want to be optimistic, but I'm, I'm afraid this is going to hurt us. Uh, kind of win now, that's what I'm saying, these next couple of years, yeah. they, they better yeah. win it. Win yeah, it. Every, every team has their window. And, yeah. and we've had our window now for a couple of years, and this is part of our window. And if this thing, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be a tough year.